They want to convince you that that part of this earth which is wicked is sort of just people doing bad things. But I'm telling you that they're intercoursing with wicked demons bona fide and they know it. It's an entire religion of itself. And the thing that they've told you in the West called Satanism is not it. This one that they'll put in front of you. Like I want to walk around with some goat horns on my head. Or I want to dress up on Halloween. Or I want to watch all the Harry Potter films and binge watch them. And I want to sit there with a Ouija board. Or I want to cross my legs and meditate and try to get in contact with my ancestors. And I'm going to burn some incense. That isn't it. That's the one that's put out there as a harbinger, as a red herring. So you cannot take seriously that there's wicked forces that are acting and there are people that intercourse with them. For real. He shall cover thee with his pains, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor be arrow that flies by day. Leviticus seventeen. The Lord spoke to Moses. Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the people of Israel and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. If anyone of the house of Israel slaughters an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp or slaughters it outside the camp and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to present it as an offering to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, he shall be held guilty of bloodshed. He has shed blood. And he shall be cut off from the people. This is in order that the people of Israel may bring their sacrifices that they offer in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord, to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and offer them as sacrifices of well-being to the Lord. The priest shall dash the blood against the altar of the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting and turn the fat into smoke as a pleasing odor to the Lord so that they may no longer offer their sacrifices for goat demons, satyrs, to whom they prostitute themselves. This shall be a statue forever to them throughout their generations. And say to them further, anyone of the house of Israel or of the aliens who reside among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord shall be cut off from the people. If anyone of the house of Israel or of the aliens who reside among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut that person off from the people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you for making atonement for your lives on the altar. For as life, it is the blood that makes atonement. Therefore, I have said to the people of Israel, no person among you shall eat blood, nor shall any alien who resides among you eat blood. And any one of the people of Israel or of the aliens who reside among them, who hunts down an animal or bird that may be eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. And any one of the people of Israel or of the aliens who reside among them who hunts down an animal or bird that may be eaten, 
shall pour out its blood and cover it with the earth. For the life of every creature, its blood is its life. Therefore, I have said to the people of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. All persons, citizens or aliens who eat what dies of itself, all persons, citizens or aliens who eat what dies of itself or what has been torn by wild animals shall wash their clothes and bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. Then they shall be clean. But if they do not wash themselves, or bathe their body, they shall bear their guilt. This is the word of the Lord, our Father. Thanks be to God. Leviticus 17. Secrets of the dark. Secrets of the dark. We've now come to a time where it's necessary to discuss the truth of things once done as a lie and as a secret in the dark. And there's a secret of the dark. And it's appropriate anyways. It's appropriate. In this chapter. Hmm, hmm, hmm. In this chapter, there is a major concern that arises in Israel. And heretofore, we've been dealing with things inside the camp, things inside the world, things inside the community of people, of the children of Israel, the children of God, the creation of the Father, of the human being that he created to be as a child to him, his own best creation. There are things that we've been discussing that have been going on into those communities. And he's been saying, these things mean for the community sickness, disease, and death. It means for the community, uncleanness. We talked about a lot of them. Sins. When I preach to you, clean this house. I talked about how it's the priest's role to be able to get rid of sins and to find sins. And to get it clean. Christ being the bona fide high priest whose job it is to make sure that the house, that the tabernacle is clean. The whole of the people of the father, the whole of his children, that whole house Christ, 
who is described as the priest whose job it is to make sure that the house is clean. There is one who will wash you with water, John the Baptist. There's another one, though, that will come to purge you as if by fire with the Holy Spirit. Listen, that which we can't rinse off with water, we know this. If I put it in the fire, if I put it in the fire, nothing, nothing unclean won't come out. It's not going to make it. We can wash this instrument that we're going to cut or clean with, with water and soap. And we can rub it off, but it's probably going to be some bacteria in there. In there. But before we use it for something that we're, we're serious about it not causing infection, our best thing that we can do is to put that blade or that thing into a hot fire and let it sit there. And we know that when it comes out of there, it's going to be sterile. Nowadays, scientifically, they try to use a certain types of light to do that. Super high beams of light, ultraviolet lights and stuff like that to kill bacteria. But we know that if we put that thing in that fire, it's going to come out clean. And so there's one that washes with the water, but there's one that purges with the fire. That is the Christ, the one whose job it is to clean the house. Make sure the tabernacle is clean. Talk about that. We talked about how sin, disease, and death has a way of making things unclean and getting everywhere all over everything. That's all we've been talking about. And now in this chapter of Leviticus, the Father has seen fit to reveal and to say in truth, all things put aside for those with good intentions. Did you hear what I said? I hope you're paying attention. I don't know about that. All things put to the side for those with good intentions. That's what I said. What I'm saying is that everything you've been hearing up until now has been designed as though he's talking for those to those who were intending to be good, trying to do the right thing, but just couldn't find themselves to do it. The children in the Dr. Seuss and the cat in the hat comes back when they was outside playing with the door unlocked and they seen the cat coming and she said, run, run, hurry up, dude. This dude is bad. We know it from the first time. Run to the house. Close the door. He gets to the house. The cat slid in there again. With the sin that crouches at the door. Seeking to master you. But it takes into account that these are the children who are at least of the mentality and of the spirit that they try in. So we're going to talk to them in Leviticus and 16 and 15 and 14 and explain to them, look, here's some of the stuff that can make you unclean. Here's some of the stuff you don't want around you, etc., etc. You understand? Okay, this is different here what I'm saying. I'm talking about something different now. I'm saying that the Father has saw fit now to speak to something direct today. And it doesn't have anything to do with people with good intentions. Secrets of the dark. In this chapter, he's explaining to us I want to address this. There are some people and some preachers and pastors, they speak about Satan and the devil and evil as though it's just the principalities or as though it's just some force that we can't really put a finger on and it's just out there. And if it does take any form 
on this earth, it just takes form as our enemy that we don't like. Or as somebody that's hating on us. Or somebody that hurt our feelings. That's how they preaching it. That when you see sin, evil, Satan come manifest on this earth, this principality, first of all, either the Father or Satan are principalities aloof somewhere. Ayur. That's French for anywhere. I guess in the cosmos. Not really having anything to do with what's going on here on earth with his greatest creation or anything like that. But I'm here to tell you something different now. I want you all in your faith as my children and as children of the most high God, our father. You understand? You got one that's a dad. That's me. I'm a custodian over you. But you have a father that created you in heaven and he expects things of you. And every other one of his children. I want to tell y'all something direct today. That anybody who talks to you and says the father is somewhere and Satan is somewhere. And it's just a force that acts upon us. And if I do see evil, I only really think about it in terms of my enemy that I don't like. I want to tell you it's ridiculousness. It's nonsense. The scripture sets it apart right here for real. Because they'll trick you like that. And you'll be watching movies even as a child. A Disney movie about a witch. Or Harry Potter about witchcraft. And you'll be thinking, this is just entertainment. It doesn't really happen. Because I know people don't really fly across the sky on brooms. You understand? And so one of the wicked things of Satan that he does through people who he operates with. And I'm not talking about influence and spiritual influence. I'm talking about people who he governs, who are alive and know that they are governed by the word and the deeds and the things of Satan. Just like we know that we're governed by the things of our father. That's what I'm telling you. That ball and everything that comes from him and Satan and every wicked goat demon is bona fide, man. And they're acting in concert with human beings who are alive. Yes, your dad telling you that. As you hear me preach today, because I've never preached to you like this before. I'm telling you direct so you won't be confused. There are forces of e evil that are intercoursing with live human beings just as our father speaks with us and talks with us. And it's real. And he gives us a word every day to conduct us and direct us in our lives. And he gives us a living word to read and to understand his commandments and to understand him better. But he'll enter your heart and speak to you direct. You may not have experienced that yet, but it's bona fide and it's real. And if I pray unto the Father and ask him about things, his truth that is a shield and buckler, he'll give it to me. And if I open up the scripture, it'll explain to me and answer me direct as he speaks to me as though he speaks to a friend. And now he has come to say, you think it's any different for Satan and people on this earth who intercourse with them? They want to convince you that that part of this earth which is wicked is sort of just people doing bad things. But I'm telling you that they're intercoursing with wicked demons bona fide and they know it. It's an entire religion of itself. And the thing that they told you in the West called Satanism is not it. This one that they'll put in front of you. Like I want to walk around with some goat horns on my head. Or I want to dress up on Halloween. 
or I want to watch all the Harry Potter films and binge watch them. And I want to sit there with a Ouija board or I want to cross my legs and meditate and try to get in contact with my ancestors and I'm going to burn some incense. That isn't it. That's the one that's put out there as a harbinger, as a red herring. So you cannot take seriously that there's wicked forces that are acting and there are people that intercourse with them. For real. And they practice it as a religion and they do things, things on this earth on the basis of their religion of the law that is given to them by their father. Just like we do righteous things according to what our father says. Do you understand me? It's real. And it says it right here. It says this. Now the father coming direct to his people who have good intentions to tell him something that they didn't really understand before because they assumed that everybody around them was just trying to be like them doing the good, doing the right thing. They didn't know that it was bona fide people who had real relationships with demons, wicked principalities that were telling them, this is how we do it. This is how we worship our father, the leader of us, Satan. Real Satanism, real darkness, real evil and the father had to tell Moses bro did you know that there's some amongst you that are practicing the secret dark evil filth And I know Moses had to sit back like, wait, what? Wait, what? There, there are people that have been with us and around us and people that I need. Like, this is what they've decided actually? Like, is that possible, my father? For a human? For a creation to be able to decide that they will rest their heart on bona fide wicked evilness? That's a possibility. I've only really thought that people is just hard head. I really only thought that people are just make mistakes. I really only thought that people just get confused. I really thought that people just kind of may do something bad, but really they want to do good. Like Paul said. I didn't know that there was anybody who actually believed in the wickedness that they decided to do. Those stupid, foolish people out there now. That are talking about Satanists and stuff. And then they reconfigure Satan to be a good guy. That's what I'm saying. That's not it. This Satanism that they introduce as a farce to redirect you. They'll say, oh, we know Lucifer, the son of the morning. And he was a musician and stuff. And he was such a, he was good. And it was maybe just God that was too hard on him and didn't forgive him and stuff like that. What are you talking about? And they say, we, we just say this because we really, we, we love Lucifer and everything because we, what he represents is, you know, our condition here on earth. Then the Avalon witches, they come out and say, well, we just think that it's about a female spirit because, you know, what we're up, up, upset about is that, you know, Eve was just trying to be great and the father didn't understand her. And we agree with the snake and the apple and lean into your own understanding and stuff. That's our form of Satanism because, you know, we think that it's not a bad thing for humans to search for their own answers to stuff. 
This is the foolishness and stupidness that's out there. And that's bad enough as it is, but that's nothing but confusion. Did you hear what I said? It's bad enough as it is that people are thinking and doing things like that, but that's nothing more than confusion. The father here is talking about something different, you guys. He's not talking about somebody that's confused. Run amok. Socialized. Influenced. They've been on Instagram so long, flipping through everything. They're taking in every piece of information and trying to piece it together. They're confused. They don't really know the Father won't seek them. They hunger and thirst, man, but they won't go and drink the water from the well. And they won't proceed by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God for food. They won't eat and live. So they're out here kind of wandering and confused. They're onto the Instagram and it gives them different ideas and they're piecing it together the best way they know how. It's total confusion. They don't have the truth. But still, they're confused. Did you hear what I said? This isn't talking about, Leviticus 17 isn't talking about somebody that's confused. The father says, once and for all, I want my people to know because my people have been confused as to think that everybody is confused that's not doing good. And in the grand sense of all things, I know that a lot of y'all are confused, but I'm going to look into the heart and see who really wants righteousness. Thus you have Christ cry out and say, forgive them, Father, for they know what, not what they do. We're going to look deep into their heart. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to find out who really didn't know and who did. But in Leviticus 17, it's clear that our Father is telling us once and for all, there are some who actually know and proceed. And Moses was unaware. Moses was unaware and he told him about it. And this is what he said. Moses, did you know that there are some? They know me, but they've forsaken me. And while you all are bringing your sacrifices to the community to me to worship me, they go off in secret. So I said secrets of the dark. Secrets of evil. Secrets of evil. He said, man, they go off in secret. And they're slaughtering goats and stuff to goat demons, satyrs. Let me tell you what that is. In the last chapter, I preached to you about how, and this goat demon is real. I preached to you about how the priest was going to slaughter one goat, then one goat was left to roam, and that was the one that they put all the sins onto the head. You see that? He said, let that one roam out to Azazel. Remember that? Azazel, these goat demons, and this goat demon, whose main thing is sexual lust, debauchery, okay, and drug abuse. Did you hear what I said? debauchery, sexual lust of all types and forms, and drug abuse. You ask me what you see in America, in Hollywood, what you see in the world amongst all these stars and famous people and powerful people. What are you seeing from them exactly? As their outward manifestations, when you actually know about them. You find out that they're engaged in two primary things. Sexual debauchery and lust of all types and forms and drug abuse. It's an outward manifestation of the God that they're intentionally worshiping. Who are the sinful roamers and wanderers going to be with? To become demons walking here on the earth alive. 
what he's talking about. He says, do you know that there are some that are doing that? And this one that they're talking about, this Saturn demon God, is depicted as the one with the horns that you see. And everybody putting on these horns. And he's half man, half beast. But he's always depicted with an overly erect penis. And what they describe him is, is that he tries to have sex with anything that comes near him. He typically is not successful with female human beings. But he is from time to time. And he has sex with anything, but lots of times because his lust is so great. Because his lust is so great. He has sex with beasts. All types of beasts. When he can't find anything else, he's doing whatever. If it's a man, if it's a woman, if it's a beast, if it's a child. And finally, the great abomination that desecrates to sodomize a heavenly, righteous, chaste creature. That's what you read about in Sodom and Gomorrah when they find out that there were angels of the Father chaste creatures clean that don't know the spirit of lust and all of that that when they found out that they were in there with Lot they said give them to us and Lot even offered his daughters they refused they said we want them an abomination that desecrates the earth and the stench and desecrate the heavens to be able to sodomize a chaste, righteous creature of the Father. That's the end desire of them. They're sadder type. And so they go around seeking that which is innocent to be able to intercourse with it. And it's a bona fide religion. And the Father says, do you know there are some that while you all are seeking my face, they're sneaking off in secret, man. Yeah, you thought that this person that was doing this little thing. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this person. They engage in a full gambit of a religion given by the bona fide Satan, dude. Saturn demon got their intercourse with him and it's for real. And I'm completely against it. There's no confusion in this one. There is no confusion between me and that. None. And he says they're doing it. And what I want you to do is say this, that there's a new law and a commandment. That all Animals that are hunted down and killed. Everything that we find. Everybody that has an animal. Everybody that got goats and stuff like that. Nobody can no longer do private killings of animals anymore. You see what I'm talking about? He's saying that people have goats and sheep and things like that at their home. Or whatever they have. There's no more private. He said, you see, it's in the open field. He said that, this is what I'm telling you, Moses. If it's a private. It's not of me. People can speak with me and pray with me in private. But I'm telling you, if they're doing rituals, did you hear what I said? If they're performing rituals and they won't do so openly for everyone to see if they're performing rituals. I didn't say prayer. But I pray openly with you. I pray in front of the camera. And I pray on my own. But if they start doing rituals, the slaughtering of animals and things like that, and they're doing it in secret, I'm telling you, Moses, they're messing around with the goat demon. And it's unforgivable. My face is set against it. 
I'm telling you that. And you should know it's some amongst you that are doing that dark secret, that wickedness. That's what he said. And we're at a time now. I'm telling you this. And we're at a time where it's going on now. They got the red herring off to the side where people are like, oh, Satan is Satan. But it's bona fide people, and they've been doing it, they've been doing it since way back, and they never stopped. And you're starting to it's starting to leak out in places, and they want to. That's the one they're working to keep under the wraps. Notice they don't keep under the wraps one of these stupid little celebrities that put horns on like Beyonce. They let her put her on and dance. But when this last person just recently came out with the movie, and he said he found that children were being kidnapped and trafficked for the purposes of rituals, they trying to shut that down. And when he said that there are bona fide people who not only do that with children, they do every other form of sexual thing, but then he said he knows that there are people who also, in conjunction with this, engage in the practice of drinking and eating blood. This same one that the Father told us about. Wicked women put menstruation blood in stew. Doesn't that make the stew witches brew? People who been new that they want to harness some wicked dark secret of consuming the blood of different creatures on this planet. And the father says his face is set against it. I'm not speaking now like I normally do in parable. I'm speaking directly to you. I don't want y'all to get confused. You're my children and I love you. I don't want you to grow up confused and I don't want you to grow up and be naive. Just like the father told Moses, I'm telling you all. Dark secrets, man. Not no Disney film. People who are out here slaughtering animals, slaughtering every types of creature that they find, and taking the blood and consuming it. To intercourse with goat demons. To harness the wicked truth that is called the lie. See what I said? And to worship it and to use it to subdue the real creation of this earth in righteousness to be fruitful and to multiply. It's contrary to the force of the life that our Father has blessed us with. Did you hear what I said? A bona fide murderer spirit to take the life and consume the blood of it. It's what happens when Cain roams as a murderer unrepentant gives birth to several out pops Lamech that says remember Cain murdered one I'm murdering a bunch of them Cain gets with two the polygamist man the adulterer to elevate the sins Lamech gets with two the adulterer and murderer now combined No doubt with two Jezebel spirits that will support him in his wickedness. Not wise gatekeepers. And what does he produce, you think?
What does his great great grandson look like? Well, my great 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 grandfather came, murdered his brother, his, and the blood dropped to the ground. But I murdered mine and catch it and drink it and eat it and consume it. You hear what I said? You think I'm playing with you? Because the truth crushed to earth must rise again. And our Father's truth is a shield and buckler. And He gives it to us. And we need to abide by it if we are to live. Father says they're with this one who's he's sick with the with the with the sexual immorality and he's out of control with the drug abuse. That's what they that's what they rolling with and they like that and they're doing it, bro. This ain't no regular stuff that you can get rid of and clean this house and sin that enters and infection and stuff like that and leprosy dude i'm talking about people who my face is set against and you better tell them if you slaughter those animals if you engage in any ritual and it's a secret you got to go if i find that you engage in ritual in secret rituals, you've got to go. Don't let nobody tell you. And, oh, my religion belongs to me. I don't have to do it. I, I do myself alone. If it's a ritual and they're doing it in secret, the father says, hey, it's got to go. It got to go. All of the things that I am saying that we are performing in accordance with my word, we do it in the open. We're going to take our communion in the open and we're going to share with others. When you see us do things, we're going to, our religion, we're going to alms give. We're going to feed the poor. We're going to heal the sick. We're going to take care of the widow. We're going to put houses on the orphans. Those are our rituals. Do you understand? These are our rituals, man. We're going to live this life with honor and righteous responsibility. And when we see a woman without a husband, or her husband is gone, we're going to take care of her and make sure she's all right. And when we see children without a father and children left alone, not taken care of, we got they back. And when we see one down that hasn't eaten, we're going to take care of him. When we see one sick, we're going to heal him. One blind, we're going to cause him to see. One that can't walk, we're going to help him to walk his steps. That's our rituals, man. And we perform them in the open. We love into the open. That's how we worship our father. These ones that do the secret rituals in the dark, the slaughtering of animals and human beings, the consumption of blood and other humans discharge. Other animal discharge. All types of unsightly behavior that they know they can't let nobody see them do. See? Y'all talking about the people who are wearing all black and put on a little hat. And put on black makeup and stuff like that. Or will put a little horn on their head and do a little dance. That's not what I'm talking about. That's a red herring. I'm talking about the people who are going off to places and they're performing rituals in secret to which if you lay eyes upon it, you may never want to see anything again.
Sometimes I think the preachers, the men of God, they make a mistake. And they say, well, the devil's just out and open now. No, 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 no. Because you haven't taken seriously the depth of his wickedness. That's why you can say that. I'm going to have to explain to y'all. Y'all know evil. Y'all know wickedness because, you know, hey, you can see everybody in Hollywood and the singers and the performers and stuff like that. They wear the devil's horns and they do the, they do little symbols on stage and they dress like this and dress up in costume. So I don't have to explain even this to y'all. Y'all see it. Let me tell you something. This, the father told me, you better explain it to him because it's still not being seen. The heinous wickedness that is the depth of this religion that they've been practicing. You don't know the half. They go into the dark secret places, man, and they slaughter the life of the creatures, man, and they consume the blood. That's what they're doing. Extreme sexual debauchery. Drug abuse. Murder. The attempted desecration of righteous chaste beings. And the consumption of life celebrated as a religion. Father says they doing it, man. Unfortunately, Moses, they doing it and I needed to let you know it. But I'm going to tell you the truth every time. And I need you to put some reforms into place into the community so we can get rid of this nonsense and so we'll know who is who and what is what. You know a tree about the fruit of this bear. Anybody that's saying that they got something they're doing in secret right there, you already know what that is, man. Don't, don't, we don't have to ask a secondary question. Somebody saying, I'm a part of a secret thing. I can't be open with it. I can't tell you what this is. That goes for all of it. If it's not in the open field, Moses, they can say whatever they're going to say at step two. But if you get to step two, you are the naive, foolish one who won't believe the truth that I give you as a shield and buckler. Moses, you're my guy. I love you. I give my sons, my loved ones, the truth that is a shield and buckler. I'm telling you this. If you got to get to step two, that they need to explain their secrecy to give you an explanation so you can be okay with it. I'm telling you this. You're already in bad shape because there's no thing that could be performed as a ritual in secret that I approve of. We can do all of our worship in the open, in the open field. In fact, we want people to see us do our righteousness. Amen? Mm -hmm. Last and I'm done. He gives one final warning that seems like it harkens back to things that he talked about before, but it's actually timely. He says, what about the people who are consuming, who are eating, they find animals that are either died of themselves or were ripped apart by other animals. He says, don't eat it, don't touch it. But if you do, you got to wash yourself. It's back to good intention, people. And you say, well, that's something that belongs in maybe chapter 15 or chapter 16 or chapter 14. When he talks about what not to touch or, or 11 or 12. We say, don't touch this animal or don't touch that animal. What animals to consume, right? So why, does that, why is that here? Remember that goat that they put all the sins onto his head? And then they cast them out to Azazel to go out there with the goat demon. To take them sins away from them. Though they're still here on the earth. And remember when I told you that Christ had to, had to cast the demons out of the guy that had the legion of demons in him. And then the pigs rushed off. See? 
That pig is a pig that has died of itself. I told you that humans are very interesting in that we can have intercourse and to receive fully the spirit of a wicked demon and we can tolerate it. We can tolerate it. And so that guy with that legion of demons, he was living in a community with kind of superhuman strength. He would break shackles and stuff and run around doing the most. We think we humans are weird like that. We can tolerate legions of demons, dude, intercoursing with us. Christ cast them out. They go into the pig, which is one of the uh, real nasty creatures that the father said, no, 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 not that pig. And the pigs cannot tolerate it. You see? So the pigs go and do what? Jump off of a cliff. Thus, if somebody finds those pigs dead there, should they consume them? No. First of all, because the pig is detestable. But second of all, it has died of itself. A sign. Son of the Father gives us amongst the creatures of the earth. That there's a sickness within them, sin, that has manifested itself so as to overcome the light. See that? That with the animals, they too can have sin and sickness that overcomes the life in them to subdue them. You see that? Or that here's an animal Roman and another animal sees that the sin has abounded. There was a concept that I talked about, the cyclical nature of kingdoms and about how some kingdoms, like the father had referred to Nebuchadnezzar as his servant, but then turned around through Jeremiah and said, well, Nebuchadnezzar is my servant today, but I'm definitely going to have to destroy him and rectify him later on. The cyclical nature. And what Nebuchadnezzar was going around when he was a servant of the father was actually going around as a vessel. And what he was doing was he would see nations compounded with sin and infection. Leprous nations, man. And he could see them and spot them from afar and be like, they're without the father, man. They're full of sin. They're going to be easily conquered. And he would run up on them and subdue them. You see? Coming out of the north, here come Nebuchadnezzar, man. As a force to subdue everything that has fallen from God to the point where your sins have become an outward manifestation. Y'all got me? Now the whole hood can see that you're vulnerable. You're not upright. You're not circumspect. The whole neighborhood can see. They done peeped your whole card. Oh, neighborhood can see now. Your sins has become outwardly manifest. And now everybody wants a piece of you. See? Everybody wants to take a little bite out of you because they see you in a weakened state. You see? So even in the end where the father is saying, this one who sins, have overcome them. Animals routinely kill those other animals whose sins have overcome them. They become weakened by sickness, slow, age, all of that, are all things that have overcome the life in them. Our Father says that this right here, we don't care nothing about. Because if we're His children, our spirit will never weaken. Our soul will never weaken. You understand? And we will be changed over in the twinkling of an, eye, of an eye because we have everlasting life. Such we will never be overcome. Our life force within us can never be overcome as his children. Do you understand? But when the forces out here, the wicked forces, the vessels, when they see the animal whose sins have overcome him. 
they go get after him. See that? And so he says, don't consume an animal that's been torn, torn by another wild animal. He's letting us know that there's something in us that is life that we never want to be overcome by intercoursing with evil. And there are some things that we should see on this earth that we should know and not be deceived. That there is of evil. Did you hear what I said? And he describes it unequivocally here. So that we won't think that evil is a game. Or evil is a movie. Or evil is uh, something that people kind of just do or dress up as. He wants us to know it's very real and serious. And so when you see people that engage in private ritual. Uh -uh. And when you see... Someone with these sins outwardly manifest. Uh-uh. And when you see an animal dies of itself. Uh-uh. And when you see an animal torn by other animals. Uh-uh-uh. to do it with the fire. And he gave us the bread as a substitute. Contrary to eating the flesh and the blood of sin. He presents us with unleavened bread. You see? And says, cause your body to be like it, true in front of the Father, as to what it is. Not overinflated with yeast or anything like that. And of course we know that people will try to defeat this body that the Father has given us. And they'll break it and they'll bruise it. Because they want to consume it. We know it. But we don't do that. Here's bread. Representative of our body. Humble. Not the actual body of Christ. But the bread symbolizing what the, our body should be like. Humble. And answering the question that yes, there are people out there who will murder you. But we don't eat the flesh. We eat Bread. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of our That's weed. 
bread. The humble symbolism of our body humbled in front of the Father. Not puffed up. True. And the symbol that our life is based upon the word of our It's going to say, that's the actual body of Christ and the actual blood. That's, it. that's another religion. When they consume the flesh and the blood of God's creatures. That's another religion. We bread. The name of our Father who gives us the truth that is a shield and buckler and lets us know the truth about the secrets of the dark. In the name of the sons who come to correct it and let us know what we really should be consuming. In the Holy Spirit.